Hey everyone, it is Natalie from Being Intentionally Creative and we are going to do a test today. I've been very curious to know whether or not the mixed mold brings out the color more or whether J Diction does. I've done a piece already using J Diction to because I wanted to see how bright it gets. I, I've been finding with the mixed mold that it's it just seems to get so intense with the colors once the piece starts to dry out. And I was curious to know whether or not the J Diction was similar. So I did this piece. This is actually a mixed mold mold that I picked up. I wasn't going to, honest to God. I thought, no, nope, I'm not going to pick it up. Not, and then I picked it up because they had it on sale. So I thought, well, I've got it all now. Anyway, I wanted to do another piece using the same colors, hopefully getting everything right, using the mixed mold, and then doing a comparison when we're done to see if one or the other brings up the color more. That's point number one. I have this, which is used for paint pouring. You place it on your canvas or whatever it is, and you pour the paint in through the top of this, and it spreads out to give you a design. And I use that on this piece here. Now it's kind of, I don't know whether it's cool or interesting, but they're dots under each of where each of the, the pegs was, which I thought was kind of amusing when I took it off. And I think I'm going to put something in the center of this and then put some resin in it at some point. But we're going to do the same with this. And the reason I bought these, one, I thought they'd be easier to clean than you know, maybe some something else that I might have used. And then if I do paint pours, again, at some point in the future, I have these. There's three in the set, and they each vary in size. So that's sort of where we're starting at with this video. Now, I the design, you'll see it as I'm pouring my mixed mold. I mean, you, you're getting the design, but then it just seems to disappear, which isn't really surprising to me. I'm getting used to that. And actually, I think I have sort of more of a color variation here on the bead part than I do in the center. And the back, there's not much to it. I have indicated, where am I here? At the top. Oh, there, I can't do it. This is JD, which stands for J Diction. Now, the other thing I have found, and I don't know about anyone else, is when I'm pouring the mixed mold, it's getting concentrated in the center and it's firming up there first. Part of what you'll see here is I have this spin tool. It's a spinner. You can put spices on it, put it in your cupboard and twirl it around. I got this for two reasons, really, is to try and get my product to spread out more so it's not concentrated because for me, what's happening is it's not level here at the back. I've got a, I've got a bit of a, a hill, if you will. It's almost, I don't want to call it a bunny hill, but it's sort of a, a gradual slope up to the center and then back down the other side. And I'm just thinking it's because, well, one, I'm not pouring things fast enough or it's just, it's starting to set on the bottom. So it's causing it to be not level. What I'm going to do with this when we're working today is I'm just going to use this to tap and see if I can't, you know, by moving it around and tapping it, get it to level itself out some more. It, to me, it's important that it be level and I'm not having to sand it down because if it's not laying flat on something, I don't like things sort of being off like that. I want, if it's meant to be flat, I want it flat. Now, if I over pour, or if my surface here isn't level, that's all on me. But I'm wanting to try and get these more level. So we're going to see today if this, by hitting this, makes any kind of a difference in my life. All right. Now, the last thing I want to point out before I mix everything up, uh, and I'll show you what colors I'm using, is on the box that this and the other two molds came in, it indicates to use large using the mixed mold. I did that and it was too much. I actually ended up making part of another coaster. When I say part, instead of the mold being filled all the way, it was about halfway full. So this doesn't need 
the large. I found it didn't, whether I'm, you know, totally out to lunch or something like that, don't know. I'm only mixing up to medium on this and we'll see how, how high up it goes. So I wanted to point that out because I had found that, yeah, I had way too much left over when I did this mold using the measuring of large on this. What colors are we using, you ask? Okay, we're going to use Coral by Craft Smart. So I'm going to mix mix this up. I'm just going to shake this right now to get this all shake, shake, rattle, and roll. What I did with the first one I made is I mixed my paint in with my water before I poured it into the mixed mold just to make my life easier. I'm actually going to put that mixed mold in a different dish to, um, just to mix it up. So there's that. And then I used two of the Stamping Up uh, inks. One is Crushed Curry. The other is Old Olive. And they, like, they're beautiful colors. They are. They're very pretty colors. And they're very intense. So again, I want to see what the mixed mold's going to do with it. So I want to get that out of our way. And what I did was I mix up with the paint in and then I was putting drops of these in here and you'll see it I'm going to take you through what I'm going to do and then I'd stir it up a little bit and then I'd put a couple of more drops in it and then all I did was I just poured it in here like this so you'll see what I'm doing um, okay so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my mixed mold I'm going to pour it in this container because it'll be so much easier to mix it up. I have some extra water if I need it. I shouldn't. I've, I've measured out the medium using the mixed mold measuring cup. And how much of this this coral did I put in? Oh, I just kind of, I winged it. So I'm going to wing it again. And it just is kind of interesting because it just sinks to the bottom. So again, it's going to be up to you how much you put in. Of this stuff that's totally up to you really again this test is just to see how how vibrant which which of these pieces becomes more vibrant as far as a pattern goes if I'm lucky enough to get one great I'm not really expecting a pattern and one could argue well if you don't have the exact same measurements one may be brighter than the other and that's that's true too but I think we'll be able to get a good enough you know, idea of do these products is one better than the other as far as the the intenseness of the colors or not? Or are they, you know, pretty much the same? I just, I was curious. So I thought, well, let's just do a video on this. Let's test this out. So I'm just going to move you off to the side. I'm going to take the lids off my inks and I cut the tops off of all of these. I was finding it way too difficult to get my ink out. Now, granted, people, I mean, these are meant to re-ink the ink pads that come from stamping up. And no, I don't use them for that. I use them for this art that I'm doing. Okay, I just want to make sure I have everything organized. So we'll pour this. Let's get this on here. I've got to drop paint in there. Okay. Isn't it interesting? You try and keep yourself, you know, clean to some extent and then it all goes. So we'll mix this in. And I have been finding too that some of my paint is left at the bottom. I'm not going to worry about that today. And then we'll just mix this up. And I have extra water here if I need it. So what are you doing today from a creative aspect? I guess it all depends on what time of day I decide to post these videos, doesn't it? As to whether you're having dinner, whether you're midway through your day, whether you're night time compared. I know there's someone from Australia who watches and they're a day ahead of us. So it's May 7th in Australia. It all depends on where you are in the world. I know England is uh, five hours ahead of me. I think that's right. Five, seven, five, I think. Nope, seven. Isn't that good? 
I talk to someone in England pretty much every week. <laughs> You'd think I'd know the time difference by now. Okay, so let's do this. So I'm going to put a couple of drops of this old olive in it. And I'll put some of the yellow in. It's so curious, they look the same color. Okay, we'll just mix this in a little bit. And I'll throw a couple more drops in. It's only when you spread it out that you can actually see. And I don't know whether anyone else has noticed with doing this that these colors, when you pour them out, they actually seem to sit on the top. They're the first colors out, which to me would mean that, well, hopefully, you know, as I'm pouring it, it's going to make a really, it makes a cool design, but then you lose it. So we're going to pour some through here now. See how dark that is? And hopefully you can see it coming through. And then I'm going to mix this up a little bit more because I want to try and get it down and in to the mixed mold without making dirt. And that may be part of the reason why. So let's just hit this. Spin this around. And I don't really have, if I, if this is too much, <laughs> I love it. And that's probably as full. I think I've got, uh, okay, I'm going to take that off and throw that over here. I've still got some of this left, eh? Isn't that cool? Not really. Okay, so let's just jiggle this and see if that doesn't help. I don't want to do any other kind of anything to it. I'm just going to put this heart on here and I'm just going to pour the rest of the mixed mold in here. So let me, I'm just so glad I have something beside me to put this into. And this I might. just try and design wise design wise I just love how I come up with new words okay so I'm just gonna spin this around glad you can see this I'd hate you to miss this and you know what just to have a bit of fun I'm just gonna put a drop of this green in and I'm gonna spin around Okay, let's just do that. Put that back in. We'll just tap that some more. Again, I'm doing this tapping more or less just because I want it level. I want level. Now you'll see how intense that green is getting in there, eh? And because that's... I was trying to make it so maybe I can get some some something out of that, eh? Okay, stop playing with it. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do now is we're going to have to leave that, obviously. The other good thing about this unit here, this spinner, is that I it's got a silicone base on here, which obviously makes sense so things don't fall over. I can easily wipe this up when we're done. So I'm going to leave this here to sit now and when it's done, we'll come back, we'll take it out, we'll see how it looks when we've taken it out, and then we're going to wait till a day later to see if it's any darker than the other one. Be back soon. And I'm back. Okay, I have a couple of new items here on my desktop I want to talk to you about. I also have a question for my wonderful subscribers because maybe you can help myself and someone else out because I don't know and or have an answer for them. Anyway, before we, you know, sort of get into what my question is, and I wrote it down on a piece of paper so I would not forget, and before I talk about these two pieces, my heart, my heart, I'm just going to leave it in here only because I want to fill this up with something I don't want to um, leave it as it is. We can't really see much through there, obviously, but I will either put another coat of mixed mold or I'll put resin on top of this or, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but it's not full, so I want to do something else with it. 
Um, so unfortunately, you're not going to see me take this out of the mold. Set that aside. Okay. Let's see how this turned out. Now, I just want, I'm just going to feel, I want to say it feels relatively level. I don't feel any, you know, like little bumps through it. And when I say bumps, sort of a, you know, smooth and then up and then back down again. I don't feel that. So that's good. Perhaps having something like this works. I have some little pieces of wood or, you know, these kind of, but when you've got something like this sitting on silicone and then you're trying to beat it, it, I, it wasn't going to work for me. It might work for somebody else. To me, this seemed to make sense to have one of these lazy Susans that we could put on our table, know it's level. Now, is this completely level? That I couldn't tell you. Um, I could attempt to put my, I have a marble here which I use to see if my table's level. I lift up my silicone mat that's sitting on top of my level, my table level piece, and then I see if this rolls. If it doesn't roll, I take that as meaning it's level because I, as much as I have different pieces to see whether things are level, I don't always get the results, and then I'm spending way too much time trying to figure it out. So for me, the marble, if it's not rolling, <laughs> That's a pretty good indication to me that I'm relatively level, okay? But this is why I bought this. I wanted to have something I could pat back and forth that had some movement to it, and then I could spin it, and then I could tap it some more. So that was sort of the, the theme behind buying this particular piece. Okay, so enough about my theme and why I bought it, in case you're looking for something. And I did buy this at the... Dollarama that we have in town here and I paid I want to say four dollars for it that's Canadian remember I'm from Canada and that's that's Canadian so here we go Ooh, we look like we might have a design I'm almost <laughs> let's just get it out of here and see what we've done what have we got going on underneath this okay so we'll just do this like this so that's pretty muted right now and I I'm hoping you can see. You know what? I'm just going to bring it up to the camera like this. Uh, I never know what to do with this down, up, right? Like that. I'm just going to leave it like there. So there's a, a, I'd say there's quite a bit of the coral showing up in that right now. What's going to happen to it? Well, we're going to find out in 24 hours once this is a time to set once this is a time for the water to evaporate out of it. I even expect within the next hour or so, we're going to see some definition. Well, I'm going to see some definition in it. You won't see definition in it until it's, until we come back in 24 hours. But we at least have a little bit of a design. And this time, I don't have the little dots in the circle here from that plastic piece I put in the center, which is great. My center is not obviously centered. However, a little bit of that might be when I banged it around, it might have moved. So I don't know for sure. I'm not always known to get things center. I do my bestest, but I may, I may have been off center with this and that's okay. This is a test. I want to see what happens. So we're going to let that sit for 24 hours. We will come back. We'll have a look at it. We'll see what it's done from like even just a brightness perspective, even if knowing that sort of seeing what I'm seeing here versus, you know, what we've got going on with this one, the real test on this is to see whether or not one pulls the color up better than the other. That's really what this test is all about. And that's what I'm wanting to know. You know, the J Diction pulled up the colors nicely and I can work with this. I'm going to end up sanding the back of this down. Uh, in order to get it, I want it flat. I want it flat. I have a whole big thing. I need things like level flat as much as we talked about my table like two minutes ago. So I'll do that. And then obviously because I've got these mini holes here, I am, I'm going to want to put something on here. And I've got some, some tattoos I could put on here. I have stencils, stickers, that kind of thing. So we'll see who knows where I'll end up with that. This one definitely feels, and I want to be careful because I don't want to, you know, I'm getting color on my hands now, but again, this is more level 
than that pieces, which is brilliant. And I think that's because I had the opportunity to twist and turn this and gently, we know with the mixed mold and the resin crete that it, I mean, it's a liquid. It's a liquid state until it hardens. So you don't want to be bashing this around, but it's nice that I had something and hopefully this is a tip or trick that will work for you if you're, you know, running into that same issue. Okay. Now I had one of my subscribers, I'm wiping this stuff off my hands. I had one of my subscribers mention to me that they weren't fussy on the glossy mixed mold, the glossy sealer from mixed mold that they have and wondered what I, if I had any suggestions for something else. Today in doing a piece, I used Liquitex satin sealer on it. I'm not a hundred percent sure at this point if that's a good idea to use something like that. I'm definitely thinking if this is something you want to go outside with that you're going to want to have a sealer that is going to be water resistant. So if it sits out, it rains, it's not going to ruin your piece. My question to the group is for any of you who have done sealing, I know there's waxes out there you can use. I have colored beeswax from Art Alchemy that I've bought that I want to, you know, put on some of my pieces. Again, I'm thinking they're not going to be outside though. And I don't know if this subscriber is wanting something for outside or just in general, but I would love to know for any of you who have put a sealer on, if you've used anything other than the mixed mold matte or glossy. If you have, what have you used? And how have you found it? The waxes that I've seen some people use on YouTube, I don't know where they're getting them from. And so I would just like to know if you have any suggestions, if you could comment below, that would be awesome. So I'm just looking for what have you tried? What has worked? What have you tried that may not have worked? Just so we have an idea of what we should be sealing these with if there's other options available to us. So thank you for helping out with that. One tip I want to give you so that you don't do it because I did it. I had done, I was doing some playing yesterday and when I was playing, one of the things I did was once I had made these, I didn't let these sit to completely dry out. I went and stamped on these pieces. I've got two of them to show you. I stamped on them and as you can see, it's sunk, like the color has sunk into my piece. And that's because I did it too early because it wasn't dry. I don't know if anyone else has done this or I'm just the only, you know, fun person in the world that, you know, figured this might be a good idea. But as soon as it started setting in, it kind of gives it a neat, ghost like effect. That's not what I was going for. So I'm going to suggest unless you want this effect, don't do this. Just let them dry. Then go ahead and put your, you know, stamping on it, your paste on it, whatever it is you're going to do. Wait until it's dry before you do something like that. Again, if you're looking for the ghost effect, you got it there. Go ahead. But if you're not looking for it, don't. And this is another piece that I did and I stamped on a flower and I had done like multiple colors, you know, to sort of build up the color to get it the way I wanted to look. You can see this is the center of it and I did that in some browns. But again, it's, you know, it's sunk into the piece because it wasn't dry enough. So I wanted, I want to share those with you so you didn't make the same mistake I did. Again, going for the ghost. This is the way to do it. Just so you know, you don't want the ghost effect and you want it nice, crisp and clear. Wait until the dry. That's all I got for right now. Once we have let this sit for 24 hours, we will come back and we will do it. Does one do a better job than the other? You know, granted my colors are I use the same colors, how they've come out. Again, we all know you're not going to get the same effect twice. 
but I am going to be curious. Are they the same? Is one better than the other? Or are they not? And it's totally a personal preference as to which product you use. We will be back in 24 hours. See you then. And we are back. It has not been quite 24 hours. And I'm okay with that because, well, there's definitely a difference between these two pieces that I've done. This is the one that was done yesterday and it has had, I want to say about 16 to 18 hours of drying out process. And if you compare where we left off yesterday when I took it out to where we are today, there is a difference. If you look, you know, if you rewind the video a little bit, you'll see where we left off to where we are today. And the other thing you'll notice is there is a difference between the depth of color between the mixed mold and the J Diction. I love that. I also love that I've the color of the flower, like the flower, we didn't lose that in the drying process, which is a great thing. One could argue that perhaps you know, I put more pigment in the mixed mold versus the J Diction. Yeah, I guess that's possible that, you know, my amounts weren't identical for sure. But as I've mentioned, I do find that the mixed mold allows the color to intensify as it's drying out versus the J Diction that tends to stay muted isn't right it is bringing up some color but it's definitely not bringing up the intensity of the color as the mixed mold is so i'm just going to take this and lift it up for you i will bring it closer to the camera and i'll do that with the j diction one as well so we can still see our flower pattern we haven't we haven't lost it i like the intensity or the the visual of being able to see some not all around what I would call the petals, but some. It definitely is darker than it was yesterday. If we flip it over, this is this is what the back looks like in it. There is a little bit you can see of a flower pattern back here. This is the back, this doesn't really matter. And I, I kind of have in my head to decorate the back. I am one who likes both sides of something being decorated. I don't like just, you know, one side. This will be down on the ground, obviously, like flat like this. So who's going to care? But I also kind of think of it, wouldn't it be fun if you bought something like this and you got it home because you didn't realize and then for whatever reason, you know, you just flipped it over and you saw something pretty on the underside of it. I, I think that would be really cool. I'm like that with my flat ornaments as well. I like something on both sides. That's just me. Other people may not think, and there's more work that goes into that. It just, it just to me finishes off a piece. Okay, so the J Diction one. Again, I think these dots, now that we have done this one and we were using this Lazy Susan and I was banging it around, I think if I'd had something like that when I'd done this piece, that perhaps those, you know, tiny holes wouldn't be there. Am I 100% sure on that? No, I'm not. However, it's interesting that one has the dots and the other one doesn't. But the colors definitely aren't as bold. I would recommend that if you're working with both of these products and depending on do you like things bold or do you like them subtle? So for me, sometimes I do like things that are subtle and in coloring and I don't want them to be an in your face. And other times, and you're going to have clients and people who like this intensity and they're going to be more drawn to this than to this one or if you have you know you've done sort of a mix of the mixed mold like you do two mixed mold and two J Diction that would be a nice compliment to one another if they were out somewhere on a table being used by somebody so I'm curious to know comment below what you think are you into the intensity of the colors if you are then i would you know maybe recommend playing around with the mixed mold if you like something a little less 
in your face than the J Diction. Again, the amount of color you put in absolutely is going to have an impact, but I just find that the mix to mold is creating a more a more meaty, powerful coloring than the J Diction. I just wanted to do this test. I wanted you to see so you could make up your own mind what product you wanted to use. Now, one of the other things that I had thought about after I had had a bit of an issue, one, because I didn't have this at the time, with the settling of product and this not being completely level, I had thought about, and I'm, I'm cheating here, I'm looking back at my notes so I don't forget what I'm talking about, is when you're pouring something into a mold, and I have my mold here, so I'll just pull it over, is I wondered about, you know, not just pouring it into the middle and letting it fan out, but like just pouring circles of it so it doesn't have the opportunity to land smack in one place. It's sort of, you're starting at the edge and you're working your way in, and then you start at the edge and work your way in again. One, it could give you more of a design, but two, it may help with sort of the whole level, leveling process. Because as I've found, if I pour it all into one spot, that's the spot that seems to have it drying up or starting to set the quickest. And I thought, well, okay, maybe if I just start pouring around the edges or, I mean, it doesn't matter, start in the inside and work your way out. Another option, another thing to play with, maybe maybe you're not having the issues, maybe you've got something like this that allows you to pat it and it's leveling itself out. I don't know. I'm just figure as I'm finding these things out for myself that I would throw them towards the videos and, you know, they land where they land. Now, the last thing I want to show you before I end this video, this is a, and I want to get these out of the way so you're not distracted by those. Just give me a second because I don't want to don't want to hurt them. So here we have this Christmas tree that I've made. I used, and I want to say I used the mixed mold on this. When I first took this out of the mold, and I don't know if you're going to be able to see, it was more the shade of what is on these lines right here. And then again, as it dried itself out, it took up more intensity. Now, Yesterday as well, when I was, you know, sort of waiting for all this stuff to, you know, sort of set itself up, let the coloring come out, I used some Liquitex satin varnish on this piece. And I know part of our video is talking about, well, what can I use instead of the mixed mold, you know, glossy if I don't like it or the matte if I don't like it. This piece is not going to be outside. This piece will be an indoor piece. So I felt confident using my Liquitex. It's not going to have water on it. It's not going to be in a damp situation. I wanted to try the Liquitex on it because I also wanted a satin finish on this and Mixed Mold does not have a satin sealer. I've only had one coat on it so far. What I found interesting with it though was it, it's almost as I put it on, it sort of pulled out some different coloring on this piece. And I, I couldn't tell you why. I don't know whether it's something in the product, the Liquitex or what have you, but it, it sort of changed the coloring. I don't mind it. I'm just gonna, you know why? You got a spinner here, Natalie, spin the darn thing. So it, you know, it gave it a different effect, a worn look, a weathered look, um, you know, different coloring on it, which I thought was kind of interesting that the Liquitex had done that. I don't mind it. I think I'm going to put another coating on it just because I can. The next thing I want to do is I want to put crystals on this. I have some pink, some light and dark uh, crystals that I want to put on this as a decoration. And I'll give you a bit of a backstory. My mom had the most beautiful pink mini Christmas tree and it was almost like it was made out of tinsel that had light pink bulbs uh, intertwined with it and I absolutely loved it. And I guess I'm kind of trying to 
bring back and reminisce about that. So this was kind of an idea I had on let's see what we can do. And I am going to, as I said, I'm going to put crystals on this piece and they're just going to be pink in color. But I will be putting on another coat of the Liquitex. I have not done the bottom. I'll be sealing that up as well. And we'll see how it looks at the end of the day. I'd love if I had the ability uh, without, you know, destroying the Christmas tree <laughs> would be to put a hole in it and then a star on top of some sort. But I may have to think a little longer and harder on that way. Anyway, I just wanted to show you what I had done using Liquitex. And I recommend that if you want to know some other ideas and what people are using, because I don't know the best product for the J Diction or the Mix to Mold and, it, you know, sort of other options that are out there, you know, whether people are just using like a wax or what kind of wax they're using. The Liquitex, I have, I think, some Deco Art product that I could put on this, but I, I specifically wanted a satin look to this one. That's why I've used the Liquitex. Anyway, comment below what you think. Um, any suggestions you have on how you are sealing up your products? Anything, anything. Uh, I like the comments. I like being able to reply to the comments. I love some of the, you know, like, well, I shouldn't say I love some of the comments. I'm loving that you're all commenting because there are a varied amount of comments. So please keep those coming. Be creative. Have a great day. Enjoy the journey you are on with your creative endeavors, whatever they may be, even if they're not along these lines. I just have fun. Appreciate every moment you're being creative. Thank you for watching, commenting, subscribing, and liking. It means a lot to me. Take care. Have a great day. Bye for now.